Philip II, Spanish Felipe II, the 21st of May 1527 to the 13th of September 1598, was King of Spain 1556 to 98, King of Portugal 1581 to 98, as Philip I, Felipe I, King of Naples and Sicily, both from 1554, and Jury Uxoris, King of England and Ireland, during his marriage to Queen Mary I from 1554 to 58. He was also Duke of Milan. From 1555 he was lord of the 17 provinces of the Netherlands. The son of Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain Charles V and Isabella of Portugal, Philip was called Felipe el Prudent, Philip the Prudent. In Spain, his empire included territories on every continent then known to Europeans, including his namesake the Philippines. During his reign, Spain reached the height of its influence and power. This is sometimes called the Spanish Golden Age. The expression, the empire on which the sun never sets, was coined during Philip's time to reflect the extent of his dominion. During Philip's reign there were separate state bankruptcies in 1557, 1560, 1569, 1575, and 1596. This was partly the cause of the Declaration of Independence that created the Dutch Republic in 1581. On 31 December 1584 Philip signed the Treaty of Joinville, with Henry I, Duke of Guise signing on behalf of the Catholic League, consequently Philip supplied a considerable annual grant to the League over the following decade to maintain the civil war in France, with the hope of destroying the French Calvinists. A devout Catholic, Philip saw himself as the defender of Catholic Europe against the Ottoman Empire and the Protestant Reformation. He sent a large armada to conquer Protestant England in 1588, with the strategic aim of overthrowing Elizabeth I of England and the establishment of Protestantism in England. He hoped to stop both English interference in the Spanish Netherlands and the harm caused to Spanish interests by English and Dutch privateering. Philip was described by the Venetian ambassador Paolo Fagolo in 1563 as slight of stature and round-faced, with pale blue eyes, somewhat prominent lip, and pink skin, but his overall appearance is very attractive." The ambassador went on to say, "...he dresses very tastefully, and everything that he does is courteous and gracious." Besides Mary I, Philip was married three other times and widowed four times. <laughs> Early life, 1527–54 The son of Charles I and V, King of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor and his wife, Isabella of Portugal, Philip was born in the Spanish capital of Valladolid on 21 May 1527 at Palacio de Pimentel, which was owned by Don Bernardino Pimentel the, first Marques de Tavara. the culture and courtly life of Spain were an important influence in his early life. He was tutored by Juan Martínez Silicio, the future Archbishop of Toledo. Philip displayed reasonable aptitude in arts and letters alike. Later he would study with more illustrious tutors, including the humanist Juan Cristobal Calvite de Estrella. Though Philip had good command over Latin, Spanish, and Portuguese, he never managed to equal his father, Charles V, as a polyglot. While Philip was also a German archduke of the House of Habsburg, he was seen as a foreigner in the Holy Roman Empire. The feeling was mutual. Philip felt himself to be culturally Spanish, he had been born in Spain and raised in the Castilian court, his native tongue was Spanish, and he preferred to live in Spain. This would ultimately impede his succession to the imperial throne. In April 1528, when Philip was eleven months old, he received the oath of allegiance as heir to the crown from the Cortes of Castile. From that time until the death of his mother Isabella in 1539, he was raised in the royal court of Castile under the care of his mother and one of her Portuguese ladies, Dona Leonor de Mascarenhas, to whom he was devotedly attached. Philip was also close to his two sisters, Maria and Juana, and to his two pages, the Portuguese nobleman Rui Gomes da Silva and Luís de Requesens, the son of his governor Juan de Suniga. These men would serve Philip throughout their lives, as would Antonio Pérez, his secretary from 1541. Philip's martial training was undertaken by his governor, Juan de Suniga, a Castilian nobleman who served as the Commendador Mayor of Castile. The practical lessons in warfare were overseen by the Duke of Alba during the Italian Wars. Philip was present at the Siege of Perpignan in 1542 but did not see action as the Spanish army under Alba decisively defeated the besieging French forces under the Dauphin of France. 
On his way back to Castile, Philip received the oath of allegiance of the Aragonese Cortes at Monzon. His political training had begun a year previously under his father, who had found his son studious, grave, and prudent beyond his years, and having decided to train and initiate him in the government of Spain. The king emperor's interactions with his son during his stay in Spain convinced him of Philip's precocity in statesmanship, so he determined to leave in his hands the regency of Spain in 1543. Philip, who had previously been made the Duke of Milan in 1540, began governing the most extensive empire in the world at the young age of 16. Charles left Philip with experienced advisers, notably the secretary Francisco de los Cobos and the general Duke of Alba. Philip was also left with extensive written instructions that emphasized piety, patience, modesty, and distrust. These principles of Charles were gradually assimilated by his son, who would grow up to become grave, self-possessed and cautious. Personally, Philip spoke softly and had an icy self-mastery, in the words of one of his ministers. He had a smile that cut like a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic policy After living in the Netherlands in the early years of his reign, Philip II decided to return to Spain. Although sometimes described as an absolute monarch, Philip faced many constitutional constraints on his authority, influenced by the growing strength of the bureaucracy. The Spanish Empire was not a single monarchy with one legal system but a federation of separate realms, each jealously guarding its own rights against those of the House of Habsburg. In practice, Philip often found his authority overruled by local assemblies, and his word less effective than that of local lords. Philip carried several titles as heir to the Spanish kingdoms and empire, including Prince of Asturias. The newest constituent kingdom in the empire was Navarre, a realm invaded by Ferdinand II of Aragon mainly with Castilian troops 1512, and annexed to Castile with an ambiguous status 1513. War across Navarre continued until 1528 treaties of Madrid and Cambrai. Charles V proposed to end hostilities with King Henry II of Navarre, the legitimate monarch of Navarre, by marrying his son Philip to the heiress of Navarre, Jean III of Navarre. The marriage would provide a dynastic solution to instability in Navarre, making him king of all Navarre and prince of independent Bayonne, as well as lord of a large part of southern France. However, the French nobility under Francis I opposed the arrangement and successfully ended the prospects of marriage between the heirs of Habsburg and Albrecht in 1541. In his will Charles stated his doubts over Navarre and recommended that his son give the kingdom back. Both King Charles and his son Philip II failed to abide by the elective contractual nature of the crown of Navarre, and took the kingdom for granted. This sparked mounting tension not only with King Henry II and Queen Jean III of Navarre, but also with the Parliament of the Spanish Navarre Cortes, the three states and the Diputación for breach of the realm-specific laws fueros, violation of the Pactum Subjection is as ratified by Ferdinand. Tensions in Navarre came to a head in 1592 after several years of disagreements over the agenda of the intended parliamentary session. In November 1592, the Parliament Cortes of Aragon revolted against another breach of the realm-specific laws, so the Attorney General Justicia of the Kingdom, Juan de Lanuza, was executed on Philip II's orders, with his secretary Antonio Pérez taking exile in France. In Navarre the major strongholds of the kingdom were garrisoned by troops alien to the kingdom Castilians in conspicuous violation of the laws of Navarre, and the parliament had long been refusing to pledge loyalty to Philip II's son and heir apparent without a proper ceremony. On 20 November 1592 a ghostly parliament session was called, pushed by Philip II, who had arrived in Pamplona at the head of an unspecified military force, and with one only point on his agenda. Attendance to the session was kept blank on the minutes, unlawful appointments of trusted Castilian officials and an imposition of his son as future King of Navarre at the Santa Maria Cathedral. A ceremony was held before the Bishop of Pamplona the 22nd of November, but its customary procedure and terms were altered. Protests erupted in Pamplona, but they were quelled. Philip II also grappled with the problem of the large Morisco population in Spain, who were sometimes forcibly converted to Christianity by his predecessors. In 1569, the Morisco revolt broke out in the southern province of Granada in defiance of attempts to suppress Moorish customs. Philip ordered the expulsion of the Moriscos from Granada and their dispersal to other provinces. 
Despite its immense dominions, Spain was a country with a sparse population that yielded a limited income to the crown in contrast to France, for example, which was much more heavily populated. Philip faced major difficulties in raising taxes, and collection was largely farmed out to local lords. He was able to finance his military campaigns only by taxing and exploiting the local resources of his empire. The flow of income from the New World proved vital to his militant foreign policy, but nonetheless his exchequer several times faced bankruptcy. Spanish culture flourished during Philip's reign, beginning the Spanish Golden Age, creating a lasting legacy in literature, music, and the visual arts. One of the notable artists from Philip II's court was Sofonisba Anguissola, who gained fame for her talent and unusual role as a woman artist. She was invited to the court of Madrid in 1559 and was chosen to become an attendant to Isabella Clara Eugenia (1566–1633). Anguissola also became a lady-in-waiting and court painter for the queen, Elizabeth de Valois. During her time as a court painter, Anguissola painted many official portraits of the royal family, a sharp departure from her previous personal portraits. Topic: Economy. Charles V had left his son Philip with a debt of about 36 million ducats and an annual deficit of 1 million ducats. This debt caused Philip II to default on loans in 1557, 1560, 1575, and 1596 including debt to Poland, known as Neapolitan sums. Lenders had no power over the king and could not force him to repay his loans. These defaults were just the beginning of Spain's economic troubles as its kings would default six more times in the next 65 years. Aside from reducing state revenues for overseas expeditions, the domestic policies of Philip II further burdened Spain and would, in the following century, contribute to its decline. As maintained by some historians, Spain was subject to different assemblies the Cortes in Castile, the Assembly in Navarre, and one each for the three regions of Aragon, which preserved traditional rights and laws from the time when they were separate kingdoms. This made Spain and its possessions difficult to rule, unlike France, which while divided into regional states, had a single estates general. The lack of a viable supreme assembly led to power defaulting into Philip II's hands, especially as manager and final arbiter of the constant conflict between different authorities. To deal with the difficulties arising from this situation, authority was administered by local agents appointed by the crown and viceroys carrying out crown instructions. Philip II felt it necessary to be involved in the detail, and he presided over specialized councils for state affairs, finance, war, and the Inquisition. Philip II played groups against each other, leading to a system of checks and balances that managed affairs inefficiently, even to the extent of damaging state business, as in the Perez affair. Following a fire in Valladolid in 1561, he resisted calls to move his court to Lisbon, an act that could have curbed centralization and bureaucracy domestically as well as relaxed rule in the empire as a whole. Instead, with the traditional royal and primacy seat of Toledo now essentially obsolete, he moved his court to the Castilian stronghold of Madrid. Except for a brief period under Philip III of Spain, Madrid has remained the capital of Spain. It was around this time that Philip II converted the Royal Alcazar of Madrid into a royal palace. The works, which lasted from 1561 until 1598, were done by tradesmen that came from the Netherlands, Italy, and France. King Philip II ruled at a critical turning point in European history toward modernity whereas his father Charles V had been forced to an itinerant rule as a medieval king. He mainly directed state affairs, even when not at court. Indeed, when his health began failing, he worked from his quarters at the palace monastery Pantheon of El Escorial that he had built in 1584, a palace built as a monument to Spain's role as a center of the Christian world. But Philip did not enjoy the supremacy that King Louis XIV of France would in the next century, nor was such a rule necessarily possible at his time. The inefficiencies of the Spanish state and the restrictively regulated industry under his rule were common to many contemporary countries. Further, the dispersal of the Moriscos from Granada, motivated by the fear they might support a Muslim invasion, had serious negative effects on the economy, particularly in that region. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign policy Philip's foreign policies were determined by a combination of Catholic fervor and dynastic objectives. 
He considered himself the chief defender of Catholic Europe, both against the Ottoman Turks and against the forces of the Protestant Reformation. He never relented from his fight against heresy, defending the Catholic faith and limiting freedom of worship within his territories. These territories included his patrimony in the Netherlands, where Protestantism had taken deep root. Following the revolt of the Netherlands in 1568, Philip waged a campaign against Dutch heresy and secession. It also dragged in the English and the French at times and expanded into the German Rhineland with the Cologne War. This series of conflicts lasted for the rest of his life. Philip's constant involvement in European wars took a significant toll on the treasury and caused economic difficulties for the crown and even bankruptcies. In 1588, the English defeated Philip's Spanish Armada, thwarting his planned invasion of the country to reinstate Catholicism. But war with England continued for the next 16 years, in a complex series of struggles that included France, Ireland and the main battle zone, the Low Countries. It would not end until all the leading protagonists, including himself, had died. Earlier, however, after several setbacks in his reign and especially that of his father, Philip did achieve a decisive victory against the Turks at the Lepanto in 1571, with the Allied fleet of the Holy League, which he had put under the command of his illegitimate brother, John of Austria. He also successfully secured his succession to the throne of Portugal. With regard to Philip's overseas possessions, in response to the reforms imposed by the ordinances, extensive questionnaires were distributed to every major town and region in New Spain called Relaciones Geográficas. These surveys helped the Spanish monarchy to govern these overseas conquests more effectively. <inaudible> Italy Charles V abdicated the throne of Naples to Philip on 25 July 1554, and the young king was invested with the kingdom officially called Naples and Sicily on 2 October by Pope Julius III. The date of Charles's abdication of the throne of Sicily is uncertain, but Philip was invested with this kingdom officially Sicily and Jerusalem on 18 November 1554 by Julius. In 1556, Philip decided to declare war in the Papal States and temporarily held territory there, perhaps in response to Pope Paul IV's anti-Spanish outlook. According to Philip II, he was doing it for the benefit of the Church. In a letter from Francisco de Vargas to the Princess Dowager of Portugal, Regent of Spain, dated of September 1556, it is written, I have reported to your highness what has been happening here, and how far the Pope is going in his fury and vain imaginings. His Majesty could not do otherwise than have a care for his reputation and dominions. I am sure your highness will have had more recent news from the Duke of Alva, who has taken the field with an excellent army and has penetrated so far into the Pope's territory that his cavalry is raiding up to ten miles from Rome, where there is such panic that the population would have run away had not the gates been closed. The Pope has fallen ill with rage, and was struggling with a fever on the 16th of this month. The two Carafa brothers, the Cardinal and Count Montorio, do not agree, and they and Piero Strozzi are not on as good terms as they were in the past. They would like to discuss peace. The best thing would be for the Pope to die, for he is the poison at the root of all this trouble and more which may occur. His Majesty's intention is only to wrest the knife from this madman's hand and make him return to a sense of his dignity, acting like the protector of the Apostolic See, in whose name, and that of the College of Cardinals, His Majesty has publicly proclaimed that he has seized all he is occupying. The Pope is now sending again to the potentates of Italy for help. I hope he will gain as little thereby as he has done in the past, and that the French will calm down. May God give us peace in the end, as their majesties desire and deserve." Pope Paul IV charged a seven-member commission with preparing a peace agreement. The efforts were later abandoned and the war continued. On 27 August 1557, Fernando Álvarez de Toledo, Duke of Alba and Viceroy of Naples, was at the walls of Rome, ready to lead his troops for a final assault. On 13 September 1557, Cardinal Carlo Carafa signed a peace agreement, accepting all of the Duke's conditions. Philip led Spain into the final phase of the Italian Wars. The Spanish army decisively defeated the French at Saint Quentin in 1557 and at Gravelines in 1558. 
The resulting Treaty of Cateau Cambresis in 1559 secured Piedmont, Savoy, and Corsica for the Spanish Allied States, the Duchy of Savoy, and the Republic of Genoa. France recognized Spanish control over the Francia Comte, but, more importantly, the treaty also confirmed the direct control of Philip over Milan, Naples, Sicily, Sardinia, and the state of Presidi, and indirectly through his dominance of the rulers of Tuscany, Genoa, and other minor states of all Italy. The Pope was a natural Spanish ally. The only truly independent entities on Italian soil were the Allied Duchy of Savoy and the Republic of Venice. Spanish control of Italy would last until the early 18th century. Ultimately, the treaty ended the 60-year, Franco-Spanish wars for supremacy in Italy. By the end of the wars in 1559, Habsburg Spain had been established as the premier power of Europe, to the detriment of France. In France, Henry II was fatally wounded in a joust held during the celebrations of the peace. His death led to the accession of his 15-year-old son Francis II, who in turn soon died. The French monarchy was thrown into turmoil, which increased further with the outbreak of the French wars of religion that would last for several decades. The states of Italy were reduced to second-rate powers, and Milan and Naples were annexed directly to Spain. Mary Tudor's death in 1558 enabled Philip to seal the treaty by marrying Henry II's daughter, Elizabeth of Valois, later giving him a claim to the throne of France on behalf of his daughter by Elizabeth, Isabel Clara Eugenia. France The French Wars of Religion 1562 were primarily fought between French Catholics and Protestants Huguenots. The conflict involved the factional disputes between the aristocratic houses of France, such as the House of Bourbon and House of Guise Lorraine, and both sides received assistance from foreign sources. Philip signed the Treaty of Vachelles with Henry II of France in 1556. Based on the terms of the treaty, the territory of the French Comte was to be relinquished to Philip. However, the treaty was broken shortly afterwards. France and Spain waged war in northern France and Italy over the following years. Spanish victories at St. Quentin and Gravelines led to the Treaty of Cateau Cambrésis, in which France recognized Spanish sovereignty over the French Comte. During the War of the Portuguese Succession, the pretender Antonio fled to France following his defeats and, as Philip's armies had not yet occupied the Azores, he sailed there with a large Anglo-French fleet under Filippo Strozzi, a Florentine exile in the service of France. The naval battle of Terceira took place on 26 July 1582, in the sea near the Azores, off São Miguel Island, as part of the War of the Portuguese Succession and the Anglo-Spanish War 1585-1604. The Spanish navy defeated the combined Anglo-French fleet that had sailed to preserve control of the Azores under Antonio. The French naval contingent was the largest French force sent overseas before the age of Louis XIV. The Spanish victory at Terceira was followed by the Battle of the Azores between the Portuguese loyal to the claimant Antonio, supported by French and English troops, and the Spanish-Portuguese forces loyal to Philip commanded by the Admiral Don Álvaro de Bazin. Victory in Azores completed the incorporation of Portugal into the Spanish Empire. Philip financed the Catholic League during the French Wars of Religion. He directly intervened in the final phases of the wars, 1589 to 1598, ordering the Duke of Parma into France in an effort to unseat Henry IV, and perhaps dreaming of placing his favorite daughter, Isabel Clara Eugenia, on the French throne. Elizabeth of Valois, Philip's third wife and Isabella's mother, had already ceded any claim to the French crown with her marriage to Philip. However the Parlement de Paris, in power of the Catholic party, gave verdict that Isabella Clara Eugenia was the legitimate sovereign of France. Philip's interventions in the fighting, sending the Duke of Parma, to end Henry IV's siege of Paris in 1590 and the siege of Rouen in 1592 contributed in saving the French Catholic League's cause against a Protestant monarchy. In 1593, Henry agreed to convert to Catholicism, weary of war. Most French Catholics switched to his side against the hardline core of the Catholic League, who were portrayed by Henry's propagandists as puppets of a foreign monarch, Philip. By the end of 1594, certain League members were still working against Henry across the country, but all relied on the support of Spain. 
In January 1595, therefore, Henry officially declared war on Spain, to show Catholics that Philip was using religion as a cover for an attack on the French state, and Protestants that he had not become a puppet of Spain through his conversion. While hoping to take the war to Spain and make territorial gain, French victory at the Battle of Fontaine Francaise marked an end to the Catholic League in France. Spain launched a concerted offensive in 1595, taking Dulens, Cambrai and Le Catelet and in the spring of 1596 capturing Calais by April. Following the Spanish capture of Amiens in March 1597 the French crown laid siege to it until it managed to reconquer Amiens from the overstretched Spanish forces in September 1597. Henry then negotiated a peace with Spain. The war was only drawn to an official close, however, after the Edict of Nantes, with the Peace of Vervins in May 1598. The 1598 Treaty of Vervins was largely a restatement of the 1559 Peace of Cateau Cambrasis and Spanish forces and subsidies were withdrawn. Meanwhile, Henry issued the Edict of Nantes, which offered a high degree of religious toleration for French Protestants. The military interventions in France thus failed to oust Henry from the throne or suppress Protestantism in France, and yet they had played a decisive part in helping the French Catholic cause gain the conversion of Henry, ensuring that Catholicism would remain France's official and majority faith, matters of paramount importance for the devoutly Catholic Spanish king. Mediterranean In the early part of his reign Philip was concerned with the rising power of the Ottoman Empire under Suleiman the Magnificent. Fear of Islamic domination in the Mediterranean caused him to pursue an aggressive foreign policy. In 1558, Turkish Admiral Piyale Pasha captured the Balearic Islands, especially inflicting great damage on Menorca and enslaving many, while raiding the coasts of the Spanish mainland. Philip appealed to the Pope and other powers in Europe to bring an end to the rising Ottoman threat. Since his father's losses against the Ottomans and against Hayreddin Barbarossa in 1541, the major European sea powers in the Mediterranean, namely Spain and Venice, became hesitant in confronting the Ottomans. The myth of Turkish invincibility was becoming a popular story, causing fear and panic among the people. In 1560, Philip II organized a holy league between Spain and the Republic of Venice, the Republic of Genoa, the Papal States, the Duchy of Savoy and the Knights of Malta. The joint fleet was assembled at Messina and consisted of 200 ships 60 galleys and 140 other vessels carrying a total of 30,000 soldiers under the command of Giovanni Andrea Doria, nephew of the famous Genoese Admiral Andrea Doria. On 12 March 1560, the Holy League captured the island of Jerba, which had a strategic location and could control the sea routes between Algiers and Tripoli. As a response, Suleiman sent an Ottoman fleet of 120 ships under the command of Piale Pasha, which arrived at Jerba on 9 May 1560. The battle lasted until 14 May 1560, and the forces of Piale Pasha and Turgut Reis who joined Piale Pasha on the third day of the battle won an overwhelming victory at the Battle of Jerba. The Holy League lost 60 ships 30 galleys and 20,000 men, and Giovanni Andrea Doria was barely able to escape with a small vessel. The Ottomans retook the fortress of Jerba, whose Spanish commander, D. Alvaro de Sande, attempted to escape with a ship but was followed and eventually captured by Turgut Reis. In 1565 the Ottomans sent a large expedition to Malta, which laid siege to several forts on the island, taking some of them. The Spanish sent a relief force, which finally drove the Ottoman army out of the island. The grave threat posed by the increasing Ottoman domination of the Mediterranean was reversed in one of history's most decisive battles, with the destruction of nearly the entire Ottoman fleet at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, by the Holy League under the command of Philip's half-brother, Don Juan of Austria. A fleet sent by Philip, again commanded by Don John, reconquered Tunis from the Ottomans in 1573. The Turks soon rebuilt their fleet, and in 1574 Ulik Ali Reis managed to recapture Tunis with a force of 250 galleys and a siege that lasted 40 days. Nevertheless, Lepanto marked a permanent reversal in the balance of naval power in the Mediterranean and the end of the threat of Ottoman control. In 1585 a peace treaty was signed with the Ottomans. Topic. Revolt in the Netherlands Philip's rule in the 17 provinces known collectively as the Netherlands faced many difficulties, leading to open warfare in 1568. 
He appointed Margaret of Parma as governor of the Netherlands, when he left the Low Countries for Spain in 1559, but forced her to adjust policy to the advice of Cardinal Granville, who was greatly disliked in the Netherlands, after he insisted on direct control over events in the Netherlands despite being over two weeks' ride away in Madrid. There was discontent in the Netherlands about Philip's taxation demands and the incessant persecution of Protestants. In 1566, Protestant preachers sparked anti-clerical riots known as the Iconoclast Fury. In response to growing Protestant influence, the army of the Iron Duke, Fernando Álvarez de Toledo, 3rd Duke of Alba, went on the offensive, further alienating the local aristocracy. There were massacres of civilians in Mechelen, Narden, Zutphen and Haarlem. In 1572 a prominent exiled member of the Dutch aristocracy, William the Silent Prince of Orange, invaded the Netherlands with a Protestant army, but he only succeeded in holding two provinces, Holland and Zeeland. Rampant inflation and the loss of treasure fleets from the New World prevented Spain from paying its soldiers consistently, leading to the so-called Spanish Fury at Antwerp in 1576, where soldiers ran amok through the streets, burning more than 1,000 homes and killing 8,000 citizens. On January 31, 1578, the Spanish drove the Dutch patriots out of Namur and then pursued vigorously. At Gembleu, the retreating rear guard was taken in the flank and routed. The main Netherlands force was then assaulted by the Spaniards and destroyed. In return for no more than 12 men slain, the Spanish killed or captured as many as 8,000. The States General of the Northern Provinces, united in the 1579 Union of Utrecht, passed an act of abjuration declaring that they no longer recognized Philip as their king. The Southern Netherlands what is now Belgium and Luxembourg remained under Spanish rule. In 1584, William the Silent was assassinated by Balthasar Gerard, after Philip had offered a reward of 25,000 crowns to anyone who killed him, calling him a pest on the whole of Christianity and the enemy of the human race. The Dutch forces continued to fight on under Orange's son Maurice of Nassau, who received modest help from Queen Elizabeth I in 1585. The Dutch gained an advantage over the Spanish because of their growing economic strength, in contrast to Philip's burgeoning economic troubles. The war came to an end in 1648, when the Dutch Republic was recognized by Spain as independent. <laughs> King of Portugal In 1578 young King Sebastian of Portugal died at the Battle of Alcacer Quibir without descendants, triggering a succession crisis. His granduncle, the elderly Cardinal Henry, succeeded him as king, but Henry also had no descendants, having taken holy orders. When the Cardinal King died two years after Sebastian's disappearance, three grandchildren of Manuel I claimed the throne, Infanta Caterina, Duchess of Braganza, Antonio, Prior of Crato, and Philip II of Spain. Antonio was acclaimed King of Portugal in many cities and towns throughout the country, but members of the Council of Governors of Portugal who had supported Philip escaped to Spain and declared him to be the legal successor of Henry. Philip II then marched into Portugal and defeated Prior Antonio's troops in the Battle of Alcântara. The troops commanded by Fernando Álvarez de Toledo the third Duke of Alba imposed subjection to Philip before entering Lisbon, where he seized an immense treasure. Philip II of Spain was crowned Philip I of Portugal in 1581 recognized as king by the Portuguese Cortes of Tomar and a near 60-year personal union under the rule of the Philippine dynasty began. This gave Philip II complete control of Portugal and Brazil. When Philip left for Madrid in 1583, he made his nephew Albert of Austria his viceroy in Lisbon. In Madrid he established a Council of Portugal to advise him on Portuguese affairs, giving prominent positions to Portuguese nobles in the Spanish courts, and allowing Portugal to maintain autonomous law, currency, and government. This is on the well-established pattern of rule by councils. Topic. Relations with England and Ireland Topic. King of England and Ireland Philip's father arranged his marriage to 37-year-old Queen Mary I of England, Charles's maternal first cousin. His father ceded the crown of Naples, as well as his claim to the Kingdom of Jerusalem, to him. Their marriage at Winchester Cathedral on 25 July 1554 took place just two days after their first meeting. Philip's view of the affair was entirely political. 
Lord Chancellor Gardiner and the House of Commons petitioned Mary to consider marrying an Englishman, preferring Edward Courtenay. Under the terms of the Act for the Marriage of Queen Mary to Philip of Spain, Philip was to enjoy Mary I's titles and honours for as long as their marriage should last. All official documents, including Acts of Parliament, were to be dated with both their names, and Parliament was to be called under the joint authority of the couple. Coins were also to show the heads of both Mary and Philip. The marriage treaty also provided that England would not be obliged to provide military support to Philip's father in any war. The Privy Council instructed that Philip and Mary should be joint signatories of royal documents, and this was enacted by an Act of Parliament, which gave him the title of king and stated that he "...shall aid Her Highness in the happy administration of Her Grace's realms and dominions." In other words, Philip was to co-reign with his wife. As the new King of England could not read English, it was ordered that a note of all matters of state should be made in Latin or Spanish. Acts making it high treason to deny Philip's royal authority were passed in Ireland and England. Philip and Mary appeared on coins together, with a single crown suspended between them as a symbol of joint reign. The Great Seal shows Philip and Mary seated on thrones, holding the crown together. The coat of arms of England was impaled with Philip's to denote their joint reign. During their joint reign, they waged war against France, which resulted in the loss of Calais, England's last remaining possession in France. Philip's wife had succeeded to the Kingdom of Ireland, but the title of King of Ireland had been created in 1542 by Henry VIII after he was excommunicated, and so it was not recognised by Catholic monarchs. In 1555, Pope Paul IV rectified this by issuing a papal bull recognising Philip and Mary as rightful King and Queen of Ireland. Kings County and Philipstown in Ireland were named after Philip as King of Ireland in 1556. The couple's joint royal style after Philip ascended the Spanish throne in 1556 was, Philip and Mary, by the grace of God King and Queen of England, Spain, France, Jerusalem, both the Sicilies and Ireland, defenders of the faith, Archdukes of Austria, Dukes of Burgundy, Milan and Brabant, Counts of Habsburg, Flanders and Tyrol. However, the couple had no children. Mary died in 1558 before the Union could revitalize the Roman Catholic Church in England. With her death, Philip lost his rights to the English throne including the ancient English claims to the French throne and ceased to be King of England, Ireland and as claimed by them, France. Philip's distaff great-grandson, Philippe I, Duke of Orléans, married Princess Henrietta of England in 1661. In 1807, the Jacobite claim to the British throne passed to the descendants of their child Anne-Marie d'Orléans. Topic. After Mary I's death Upon Mary's death, the throne went to Elizabeth I. Philip had no wish to sever his tie with England, and had sent a proposal of marriage to Elizabeth. However, she delayed in answering, and in that time learned Philip was also considering a Valois alliance. Elizabeth I was the Protestant daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. This union was deemed illegitimate by English Catholics, who disputed the validity of both the annulment of Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon and of his subsequent marriage to Boleyn, and hence claimed that Mary, Queen of Scots, the Catholic great-granddaughter of Henry VII, was the legitimate heir to the throne. For many years Philip maintained peace with England, and even defended Elizabeth from the Pope's threat of excommunication. This was a measure taken to preserve a European balance of power. Ultimately, Elizabeth allied England with the Protestant rebels in the Netherlands. Further, English ships began a policy of piracy against Spanish trade and threatened to plunder the great Spanish treasure ships coming from the New World. English ships went so far as to attack a Spanish port. The last straw for Philip was the Treaty of Nunsich signed by Elizabeth in 1585 promising troops and supplies to the rebels. Although it can be argued this English action was the result of Philip's Treaty of Joinville with the Catholic League of France, Philip considered it an act of war by England. The execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, in 1587 ended Philip's hopes of placing a Catholic on the English throne. He turned instead to more direct plans to invade England and return the country to Catholicism. In 1588, he sent a fleet, the Spanish Armada, to rendezvous with the Duke of Parma's army and convey it across the English Channel. However, the operation had little chance of success from the beginning, because of lengthy delays, lack of communication between Philip II and his two commanders and the lack of a deep bay for the fleet. 
At the point of attack, a storm struck the English Channel, already known for its harsh currents and choppy waters, which devastated large numbers of the Spanish fleet. There was a tightly fought battle against the English Royal Navy, it was by no means a slaughter only five Spanish ships were destroyed, but the Spanish were forced into a retreat, and the overwhelming majority of the armada was destroyed by the harsh weather. Most of Spain's casualties resulted when sailors died of or were incapacitated from disease and exposure, not from battle wounds. Whilst the English Royal Navy may not have destroyed the armada at the Battle of Gravelines, they had prevented it from linking up with the army it was supposed to convey across the Channel. Thus whilst the English Royal Navy may have only won a slight tactical victory over the Spanish, it had delivered a major strategic one—preventing the invasion of England. Eventually, three more armadas were assembled, two were sent to England in 1596 and 1597, but both also failed. The third 1599 was diverted to the Azores and Canary Islands to fend off raids. This Anglo-Spanish War 1585 would be fought to a grinding end, but not until both Philip II d. 1598 and Elizabeth I d. 1603 were dead. The defeat of the Spanish Armada gave great heart to the Protestant cause across Europe. The storm that smashed the Armada was seen by many of Philip's enemies as a sign of the will of God. Many Spaniards blamed the Admiral of the Armada for its failure, but Philip, despite his complaint that he had sent his ships to fight the English, not the elements, was not among them. A year later, Philip remarked, The Spanish navy was rebuilt, and intelligence networks were improved. A measure of the character of Philip can be gathered by the fact that he personally saw to it that the wounded men of the Armada were treated and received pensions, and that the families of those who died were compensated for their loss, which was highly unusual for the time. While the invasion had been averted, England was unable to take advantage of this success. An attempt to use her newfound advantage at sea with an English counter-armada the following year failed disastrously. Likewise, English buccaneering and attempts to seize territories in the Caribbean were defeated by Spain's rebuilt navy and their improved intelligence networks although Cadiz was destroyed by an Anglo-Dutch force after a failed attempt to seize the treasure fleet. <laughs> Death Philip II died in El Escorial, near Madrid, on 13 September 1598, of cancer. He was succeeded by his 20-year-old son, Philip III. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy. Under Philip II, Spain reached the peak of its power. However, in spite of the great and increasing quantities of gold and silver flowing into his coffers from the American mines, the riches of the Portuguese spice trade, and the enthusiastic support of the Habsburg dominions for the Counter-Reformation, he would never succeed in suppressing Protestantism or defeating the Dutch rebellion. Early in his reign, the Dutch might have laid down their weapons if he had desisted in trying to suppress Protestantism, but his devotion to Catholicism would not permit him to do so. He was a devout Catholic and exhibited the typical 16th-century disdain for religious heterodoxy, he said, "...before suffering the slightest damage to religion in the service of God, I would lose all of my estates and a hundred lives, if I had them, because I do not wish nor do I desire to be the ruler of heretics." England and Philip parted ways after the death of his queen, nicknamed, "...Bloody Mary." Philip's gravest mistake over the long run was his attempt to violently eradicate Protestantism from the Netherlands, which was a major economic asset for the empire. Under harsh occupation, the Dutch finally rebelled and wrested independence after an 80-year war, the strain of which did Philip's realm little good. His greatest battlefield accomplishment was the defeat of the Ottoman fleet at Lepanto, which turned the tide against Turkish aggression. As he strove to enforce Catholic orthodoxy through an intensification of the Inquisition, students were barred from studying elsewhere, and books printed by Spaniards outside the kingdom were banned. Even a highly respected churchman like Archbishop Carranza of Toledo was jailed by the Inquisition for 17 years, for publishing ideas that seemed sympathetic in some degree with Protestantism. Such strict enforcement of orthodox belief was successful, and Spain avoided the religiously inspired strife tearing apart other European dominions. Yet, the school of Salamanca flourished under his reign. Martín de Ospilcada, highly honored at Rome by several popes and looked on as an oracle of learning, published his Manuale Sive Enchiridion Confessoriorum et Poenitentium Rome, 1568, long a classical text in the schools and in ecclesiastical practice. 
Francisco Suárez, generally regarded as the greatest scholastic after Thomas Aquinas and regarded during his lifetime as being the greatest living philosopher and theologian, was writing and lecturing, not only in Spain but also in Rome 1580 where Pope Gregory XIII attended the first lecture that he gave. Luis de Molina published his De liberi arbitri cum gratiae donis, Divina Praecientia, Predestination et Reprobation Concordia 1588, wherein he put forth the doctrine attempting to reconcile the omniscience of God with human free will that came to be known as Molinism, thereby contributing to what was one of the most important intellectual debates of the time. Molinism became the de facto Jesuit doctrine on these matters, and is still advocated today by William Lane Craig and Alvin Plantinga, among others. Because Philip II was the most powerful European monarch in an era of war and religious conflict, evaluating both his reign and the man himself has become a controversial historical subject. Even before his death in 1598, his supporters had started presenting him as an archetypical gentleman, full of piety and Christian virtues, whereas his enemies depicted him as a fanatical and despotic monster, responsible for inhuman cruelties and barbarism. This dichotomy, further developed into the so-called Spanish black legend and white legend, was helped by King Philip himself. Philip prohibited any biographical account of his life to be published while he was alive, and he ordered that all his private correspondence be burned shortly before he died. Moreover, Philip did nothing to defend himself after being betrayed by his ambitious secretary Antonio Perez, who published incredible calumnies against his former master. This allowed Perez's tales to spread all around Europe unchallenged. That way, the popular image of the king that survives to today was created on the eve of his death, at a time when many European princes and religious leaders were turned against Spain as a pillar of the Counter-Reformation. This means that many histories depict Philip from deeply prejudiced points of view, usually negative, however, some historians classify this anti-Spanish analysis as part of the black legend. In a more recent example of popular culture, Philip II's portrayal in Fire Over England 1937 is not entirely unsympathetic, he is shown as a very hard-working, intelligent, religious, somewhat paranoid ruler whose prime concern is his country, but who had no understanding of the English, despite his former co-monarchy there. Even in countries that remained Catholic, primarily France and the Italian states, fear and envy of Spanish success and domination created a wide receptiveness for the worst possible descriptions of Philip II. Although some efforts have been made to separate legend from reality, that task has proved extremely difficult, since many prejudices are rooted in the cultural heritage of European countries. Spanish-speaking historians tend to assess his political and military achievements, sometimes deliberately avoiding issues such as the king's lukewarmness or even support toward Catholic fanaticism. English-speaking historians tend to show Philip II as a fanatical, despotical, criminal, imperialist monster, minimizing his military victories Battle of Lepanto, Battle of St. Quentin, etc. to mere anecdotes, and magnifying his defeats namely the Invincible Armada even though at the time those defeats did not result in great political or military changes in the balance of power in Europe. Moreover, it has been noted that objectively assessing Philip's reign would necessitate a re-analysis of the reign of his greatest opponents, namely England's Queen Elizabeth I and the Dutch William the Silent, who are popularly regarded as great heroes in their home nations. If Philip II is to be shown to the English or Dutch public in a more favorable light, Elizabeth and William would lose their cold-blooded, fanatical enemy, thus decreasing their own patriotic accomplishments. Philip II's reign can hardly be characterized by its failures. He ended French Valois ambitions in Italy and brought about the Habsburg ascendancy in Europe. He commenced settlements in the Philippines, which were named after him, and established the first trans-Pacific trade route between America and Asia. He secured the Portuguese kingdom and empire. He succeeded in increasing the importation of silver in the face of English, Dutch, and French privateers, overcoming multiple financial crises and consolidating Spain's overseas empire. Although clashes would be ongoing, he ended the major threat posed to Europe by the Ottoman navy. Topic titles, honors and styles Air titles Prince of Girona, 21 May 1527 – 16 January 1556 – Prince of Asturias 1528–1556 – King of Castile as Philip II, 16 January 1556 – 13 September 1598 – King of Castile, of Leon, of Granada, of Toledo, of Galicia, of Seville, of Córdoba, of Murcia, of Jaén, of the Algarves, of Algeciras, of Gibraltar, of the Canary Islands, of the Indias, the Islands and mainland of the Ocean Sea. 
Lord of Molina, Lord of Biscay, King of Aragon as Philip I, the 16th of January 1556 to the 13th of September 1598, King of Aragon, King of the Two Sicilies, King of Naples, of Jerusalem, since the 25th of July 1554, King of Sicily, Duke of Athens, of Neopatria, King of Valencia, King of Majorca, King of Sardinia, of Corsica, Margrave of Aristano, Count of Gosiano, King of Navarre. Count of Barcelona, of Roussillon, of Sardinia. King of Portugal as Philip I, the 12th of September 1580 to the 13th of September 1598 King of Portugal and the Algarves of either side of the sea in Africa, Lord of Guinea and of Conquest, Navigation, and Commerce of Ethiopia, Arabia, Persia, and India, etc. King of England de jure uxoris as Philip I, the 25th of July 1554 to the 17th of November 1558 King of England, France, titular Defender of the Faith, King of Ireland Imperial and Habsburg patrimonial titles, Duke of Milan, the 11th of October 1540, secret donation, the 25th of July 1554, public investiture, the 13th of September 1598, Imperial Vicar of Siena, since the 30th of May 1554, Archduke of Austria. Princely Count of Habsburg and of Tyrol Prince of Swabia Burgundian titles Lord of the Netherlands, 25 October 1555 – 13 September 1598 Duke of Lothier, of Brabant, of Limburg, of Luxembourg, of Gelders. Count of Flanders, of Artois, of Hainaut, of Holland, of Zeeland, of Namur, of Zutphen. Margrave of the Holy Roman Empire. Lord of Frisia, Salins, Mechelen, the cities, towns and lands of Utrecht, Overissel, Groningen. Count Palatine of Burgundy, since 10 June 1556. Count of Charolais since 21 September 1558. Duke of Burgundy. Dominator in Asia, Africa Honours Knight of the Golden Fleece, 1531–13 September 1598 Grand Master of the Order of the Golden Fleece, 23 October 1555 – 13 September 1598 Grand Master of the Order of Calatrava, 16 January 1556 – 13 September 1598 Grand Master of the Order of Alcantara, 16 January 1556 – 13 September 1598 Grand Master Master of the Order of Santiago, the 16th of January 1556 to the 13th of September 1598, Grand Master of the Order of Montesa, the 8th of December 1587 to the 13th of September 1598, Philip continued his father's style of Majesty, Latin Maestas, Spanish Majestad, in preference to that of Highness, Celsitudo, Alteza. In diplomatic texts, he continued the use of the title Most Catholic Rex Catholicismus, Re Catolico first bestowed by Pope Alexander VI on Ferdinand and Isabella in 1496. Following the Act of Parliament sanctioning his marriage with Mary, the couple was styled Philip and Mary, by the grace of God King and Queen of England, France, Naples, Jerusalem, and Ireland, defenders of the faith, princes of Spain and Sicily, archdukes of Austria, dukes of Milan, Burgundy and Brabant, counts of Habsburg, Flanders and Tyrol. Upon his inheritance of Spain in 1556, they became Philip and Mary, by the grace of God King and Queen of England, Spain, France, both the Sicilies, Jerusalem and Ireland, defenders of the faith, Archdukes of Austria, Dukes of Burgundy, Milan and Brabant, Counts of Habsburg, Flanders and Tyrol. In the 1584 Treaty of Joinville, he was styled Philip, by the grace of God second of his name, King of Castile, Leon, Aragon, Portugal, Navarre, Naples, Sicily, Jerusalem, Majorca, Sardinia, and the Islands, Indies, and Terra Firma of the Ocean Sea, Archduke of Austria, Duke of Burgundy, Lothier, Brabant, Limbourg, Luxembourg, Gelders, and Milan, Count of Habsburg, Flanders, Artois, and Burgundy, Count Palatine of Hainaut, Holland and Zealand, Namur, Drenthe, Zutphen, Prince of Zavuanum, Marquis of the Holy Roman Empire, Lord of Frisia, Saland, Mechelen, and of the cities, towns, and lands of Utrecht, over Russell, and Groningen, Master of Asia and Africa, his coinage typically bore the obverse inscription, PHSD, GHISPZ Rex Latin, Philip, by the grace of God King of Spain etc., followed by the local title of the Mint DVX Bra for Duke of Brabant, C. Hole for Count of Holland, D. T. R. S. I. S. S. V for Lord of Overissel, and C. The reverse would then bear a motto such as Pace Etivstitia for peace and justice or Dominvs Mihi Adivtor the Lord is my helper. 
A medal struck in 1583 bore the inscriptions Philip II Hispet Novi Orbis Rex Philip II, King of Spain and the New World and Non Suffocate Orbis The World is Not Enough. Topic heraldry Topic Ancestry Topic Family Philip was married four times and had children with three of his wives. Philip's first wife was his first cousin, Maria Manuela, Princess of Portugal. She was a daughter of Philip's maternal uncle, John III of Portugal, and paternal aunt, Catherine of Austria. They were married at Salamanca on 12 November 1543. The marriage produced one son in 1545, after which Maria died four days later due to hemorrhage. Carlos, Prince of Asturias, the 8th of July 1545 to the 24th of July 1568, died unmarried and without issue. Philip's second wife was his first cousin once removed, Queen Mary I of England. The marriage, which took place on the 25th of July 1554 at Winchester Cathedral, was political. By this marriage, Philip became Jury Uxoris King of England and Ireland, although the couple was apart more than together as they ruled their respective countries. The marriage produced no children, although there was a false pregnancy, and Mary died in 1558, ending Philip's reign in England and Ireland. Philip's third wife was Elizabeth of Valois, the eldest daughter of Henry II of France and Catherine de Medici. She was also a distant relation of Philip she was descended from their mutual ancestor Alfonso VII of Leon and Castile. The original ceremony was conducted by proxy the Duke of Alba standing in for Philip at Notre Dame prior to Elizabeth's departure from France. The actual ceremony was conducted in Guadalajara upon her arrival in Spain. During their marriage 1559 they conceived five daughters and a son, though only two of the girls survived. Elizabeth died a few hours after the loss of her last child. Their children were, stillborn son 1560, miscarried twin daughters August 1564. Isabella Clara Eugenia the 12th of August 1566 to the 1st of December 1633 married Albert the 7th Archduke of Austria Catherine Michel the 10th of October 1567 to the 6th of November 1597 married Charles Emmanuel the 1st Duke of Savoy and had issue Miscarried daughter, the 3rd of October 1568, Philip's fourth and final wife was his niece Anna of Austria. By contemporary accounts, this was a convivial and satisfactory marriage, 1570 to 1580, for both Philip and Anna. This marriage produced four sons and one daughter. Anna died of heart failure eight months after giving birth to Maria in 1580. Their children were Ferdinand, Prince of Asturias, the 4th of December 1571 to the 18th of October 1578, died young. Charles Lawrence, the 12th of August 1573 to the 30th of June 1575, died young. Diego, Prince of Asturias, the 15th of August 1575 to the 21st of November 1582, died young. Philip III of Spain, the 3rd of April 1578 to the 31st of March 1621. Maria, the 14th of February 1580 to the 5th of August 1583, died young. Topic see also descendants of Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon list of Portuguese monarchs list of Spanish monarchs the empire on which the sun never sets royal armory of Madrid topic notes topic references topic further reading Braudel, Fernand the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean World in the Age of Philip II, 2 volume, 1976, volume 1 Free to Borrow Israel, Jonathan. King Philip II of Spain as a Symbol of Tyranny, Coherencia 15.28, 137-154, online Cayman, Henry. Philip of Spain, Yale Up, 1999, a major scholarly bio. Kelsey, Harry, Philip of Spain, King of England, The Forgotten Sovereign, London, I.B. Tories, 2011. Merriman, R.B. The Rise of the Spanish Empire in the Old World and in the New Four Vols, 1918, Volume 4 has in-depth coverage of Philip II in 836 pp from a leading scholar. Pedigree, Andrew, 2002. Europe in the 16th Century. Oxford, Blackwell. ISBN 0-631-20704-X. Patterson, Benton Rain. With the Heart of a King, Elizabeth I of England, Philip II of Spain and the Fight for a Nation's Soul and Crown 2007 Rodriguez Salgado, M.J. The Court of Philip II of Spain. In Prince's Patronage and the Nobility, the Court at the Beginning of the Modern Age, c.c., 1450-1650. 
Edited by Ronald G. Ash and Adolph M. Burke. New York, Oxford University Press, 1991. ISBN 0-19-920502-7. Parker, Jeffrey. Imprudent King, A New Life of Philip II 2014, a major scholarly bio Parker, Jeffrey. The Grand Strategy of Philip II New Haven, 1998. Parker, Jeffrey. Philip II 1995, short scholarly bio Petrie, Charles. Philip II of Spain 1963, short scholarly bio Redworth, Glynn. Philip 1527-1598. Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, online edition, May 2011 Retrieved 25 August 2011 External links The Grand Strategy of Philip II Letters of Philip II, King of Spain 1592-1597 Philip II of Spain, King of England Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Philip II. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Philip II Letter, 1578 December 2. From the Collections at the Library of Congress. King Philip II Grant of Arms, 1566 November 25. From the Collections at the Library of Congress. Letters of Philip II, King of Spain, 1592-1597 at L. Tom Perry Special Collections, Brigham Young University Paul IV Letter to Philip II, MSS 8489 at L. Tom Perry Special Collections, Brigham Young University